Hi, Carolyn Carney here at Palais Arts, and I'm standing with the wonderful Juliana Strzok. Uh, Juliana is going to be in our Portrait at show, uh, which runs from January 19th through March 12th. Uh, Juliana, could you introduce us to your pieces? Sure. Um, so this one is called Confluences, and this one is called Gemini. And um, they're both, um, I have a pretty wide variety of styles, and I use a lot of different media um, in my work. And um, this one is actually a photograph that I took, um, and then I, I cut out this piece of leaf, and so that's a, a pencil drawing behind it. And um, this is uh, an oil painting, um, and it's, it's also um, kind of very accurate with the, the background. And so what I, what I found during COVID was that I was stuck in the yard and I was obsessing over bugs and, and leaves and all the little <laughs> things that I had access to with my kids in the yard. And um, I really just started becoming um, very interested in the scale and really you, know, you can get up to close to a bug. You can get up really close and you can look them in the eye. And I thought that was fascinating <laughs> and wonderful. And um, I um, you know, immediately started to take these ideas to the studio and um, I have a lot of different pieces that are kind of based on, you know, natural studies that I've done. Um, but then I also have a lot of stuff that's more kind of architectural, urban city scenes. So um, it's a wide range, but these are, these are two of my favorite that I did recently. And I love that you say that, like, during COVID, you were inspecting, uh, like, all of the elements and area that you had access to. Because we're speaking about earlier that, like, we don't often think about it, but they have their own little world, which we are not privy to, like almost like an alien like environment that exists with ours, but that we are not in day to day, which uh, I think is really interesting. Or we are in day to day, but it's like two different parts of the meta. So, yeah. yeah. And I love that you are exploring that. Um I want to talk a little bit about, like, go into specifics about each of the pieces because they have a similar natural element, but you have two different approaches to it. Um, so this is a very, both of them are unique, but this is a very unique piece because you often don't, like, people do mixed media and usually that involves them doing a drawing and then collaging over. But this is literally something where you've taken a photograph and then gone in. Uh, how did you come up with that idea? What... What, when you approached this, what was your impetus? Um, yeah, I mean, I think that um, it's really like I gained a lot of insight um, by really just my studies and getting close um, to nature. And I think like this one, I, the best way to describe this one, I think, to play off of this one, this is much more kind of literal. Um, I, I really was interested in this guy. I wanted to get to know him, and I wanted to get right in there. Whereas with, um, with this one, it's sort of the confluences, you know, we're all used to looking at leaves and natural materials, right? But um, I wanted to sort of just play around with the more metaphorical side of it yeah. and, um, you know, kind of draw some connections to, to the things that I've been studying. Yeah, yeah. like for instance, you, uh, and we'll zoom in on this, but you have, I believe these are phases of the moon, correct? Yes, and um, that sort of morph into a shell, which morph into the leaf. You know, I, I like to play with the shapes that I find a lot of crossover um, mm -hmm. between just, you know, the, the, the textures and the shapes um, that can really grab you aesthetically, but then, you know, they also then, they make you think about the content and the subject matter as well and just sort of start looking at it more closely. Yeah, and I think that that's, the, the intricacy of it is really interesting and the fact that since this is, you do feel like you're looking through into something like you're, and this almost becomes a portal to what you've drawn in it, which... Well, I'm glad that you, you've seen that portal because that's, um, that was that was sort of what I had um, in mind. When you when you kind of, you know, are looking at something beautiful in the natural world, you know mm -hmm. that there's so much more behind that, yeah. right? There's, there's, there's so much that's going into that, that mm -hmm. part of it you can see, most of it you can't see. Yeah. Um, and I think it's just um, that art has a way of being able to kind of exhibit all these things at once. Yeah, and uh, pull you in, and uh, it has confluence. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, and then this you've uh, handled in, like you said, kind of the opposite way. It, I, one of the things, and I hope I say this uh, eloquently enough, but I'm just gonna say it bluntly, this almost looks like they're standing on the moon or another planet, which I feel like is your intention. Uh, can you talk about how, can you first of all talk about 
Just tell us, can you tell us the story of... Sure. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> well, no, no, Gemini is, um, that's exactly right. Because Gemini, I wanted it to be um, a little bit vague. I mean, this is, um, could it be the banister of my death, perhaps? Or it could be, you know, another planet surface. <laughs> um, but, um, you know, it was, uh, it, I was at the time, um, I, I met this bug, this particular one, during the Gemini meteor shower. And um, so, and I, I've always been interested in astronomy. I read about it and I'm trying to learn about it on my own. And um, so it was so, it was truly like a, a study of both things at once that then um, I was able to bring together. And I thought it was a fun solution to the, you know, to, to wanting to show all these different elements. And, and really, uh, the, the alien-like qualities of, of some of these creatures that I've been really face-to-face -face with. Yeah. Well, I was, I was going to mention that um, you have two, two different formats here. On the, for lack of a better term, bug one, you actually are taking, portray it and making a portrait. It's a portrait of this bug. And uh, then you are using details not only to describe the bug and what the bug's life might be like, because as you said, that could be a railing or that could be another planet to the bug. It doesn't, it's both. Right. And um, then you have a meteor shower in the back that is telling us a little something more about the bug and perhaps- the world in which it's existing. Right. And then, uh, so there's that. And then- So you have like the macro- Exploration and portraying something. And I love to study these differences of scale too. I yeah, love, this is one of my favorite. And that was what I was going to bring up with the other one that you've gone and taken a very deep look into the minutia of. So you know, we would all we all see leaves in vines and in our backyards and all that. And you've gone into the minutia and found other worlds, mm -hmm. and portrayed them. So can can you talk about? Um, how your your brain is working from go? They're both narratives in in their way. How is it working from one narrative to another well, and, narrative? Yeah, and it's also that there are two different approaches to how you're thinking about it that work. The both work in terms of understanding, like not just you understanding, but us understanding. Right. right. Yeah. Well, that, I think that's the key, actually. You you observing. Um, I mean, there's always going to be, a, an artist is always going to um, approach these artistic problems differently, um, portraying different things, whether it be kind of like a, a straight portrait of, of a family member, or if you're, you know, trying to get close to something that you have never really, you know, been face to face with before. But um, for me, I want to have enough elements in there that um, that create interest for people. It's, it's the most important thing is the viewer kind of um, seeing what they will and kind of adding their own layers of yeah. interest and their own layers of emotion onto it. Um, because it's, it's the viewer adding, adding their own layers of interest to the piece that is truly what makes it meaningful and, and beautiful, I would say. So, um, yeah, I mean, so some of the motivations for me, what, you know, the beauty that I will put out, pull out of it Mm -hmm. um, it's obviously going to be quite different from a, a different viewer. Yeah. And I wanted it to. Be, I, I I want to create work that um you know would just make connections and touch people in different ways, and, and they really can bring their own their own screen to it. Yeah, which I think is one of the and it's something that with every show like a theme of like we make the theme, but then when we talk about it with artists, the theme like takes on different levels. And one of the things we've been talking about the last couple of days is this idea that the artist puts their meaning into it mm -hmm. and then the viewer or and the buyer, uh, like the collector puts their meaning on it and it becomes, so it becomes an exploration of your life and your experiences and your observations as the artist, but then the person who um, ends up going and falling in love with this piece, they're going to find meaning in it in that moment and then it will be a touchstone for additional moments throughout. So something that's really interesting about that process is that it allows over time for you to put the energy, your energy and your view into it, and then them to take that and make their own perspective with it. It portrays something for them on top of what it portrays for you. Definitely. Yeah, I'm, I'm always, um, you know, I can be quite controlling in, in both my style and choosing of subject matter, mm -hmm. but ultimately, if a piece, once a piece is done, 
Um, I want, I'm very pleased and I'm happy with someone else looking at it and finding something completely different. Yeah, with a new new perspective. I had in mind when I was painting it. I, yeah. I, I, I welcome that and I think that's like, what makes art so special. I love that attitude. So. It also refreshes and renews your own creativity when you hear other people and what I, I always wish that we could afford wall space for people to just write a comment yeah. under artwork <laughs> because they come up with something and and it will give other ideas to even more people. Yes, and it definitely um, it, it revitalizes you as an artist to, to for the next project. Yeah, yeah, and and you had said about you know, you're studying in Europe. And um, the thing is, is that oftentimes you're looking at antiquities and the meaning of them has changed. And yet there is this central yeah, meaning. Yeah, still our touchstone. Sure. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, looking at your own work, um, what, what do you see future generations as um, being co compelled to to see as they this as they look. Really deep question. Yeah. <laughs> well, I I know she's capable of answering. Yes. Well, she's a smarty. Well, I, I mean, when I when I when my kids are um, critiquing my artwork, um, which is very very valuable, um, I am often so surprised with what they pull out of it, and um, I I really just um, I, I think art retains beauty um, on its own uh, in perpetuity. As long as people are looking at it and find something they like about it. And so it's really just um, the responsibility of the artist is to create it in the first place. And, you you know, you put your love into it and you, you put your, your study and your insight into it. Um, but ultimately, it's going to be the viewer who decides whether or not the, the piece has value for them. So, yeah. yeah. Well, these are two... Beautiful is the wrong word because they are beautiful. They are dynamic, but they are also very thoughtful and uh, engaging. So uh, we hope that you will come see Juliana's beautiful pieces at our portrait show from now through March 12th. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you.